Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael. You guys are watching IDB. And in this video, I want to share with you 10 tips and tricks for iMessage that not that many people know about. So after you watch this video, you'll be able to get so much more out of iMessage and it'll be so much more useful for you. So let's go ahead and jump in right now. All right, so 10 tips and tricks for iMessage. Before we start, I just wanna say, make sure you watch until the end of the video, as I really think you're going to enjoy the last tip I have to show you. Number one is a new feature in iOS 16, and it is undoing a sent iMessage. This happens to me so many times. I open up the messages application and I send a text really quickly, only to realize that when I opened up the application, it launched me into the wrong conversation. So I sent the text to the completely wrong person. Luckily, there's a feature in iOS 16 that lets you undo a sent iMessage. You have a pretty small time window after you send the message, but all you have to do is press and hold on the bubble and click on undo send. If the recipient never saw the original message, they will never be able to see what was sent to their phone originally. The only thing they're going to see is that you unsent a message. And number two is sort of an extension of the first feature. This is also new in iOS 16 and it is editing a sent iMessage. So maybe you texted the right person. However, you may have had a typo or you spelled something wrong in the message. Just as you did with undoing the sent iMessage, all you have to do is press and hold on the bubble and click on edit. And then you can change the contents of that message. Just keep in mind that if you wait like five or 10 minutes, you won't be able to edit the message. So the edit has to be made pretty quickly after you send it. Next up at number three is customizing your iMessage settings on a by person basis. So many people think with features such as read receipts and sharing your focus status that it either has to be completely on or completely off. However, you can actually customize these settings based on who you're texting. So if you tap on the contact information at the top of the message thread, you can choose to customize these settings on a person by person basis. Number four is sharing your text messages and also deleting individual text messages from the thread. If you press and hold on a bubble and then click on more, you're going to notice that you have a checkbox next to each text. You can choose to delete any text message you want. So this is useful if your friend sends you an insufferable meme that you don't want to stare at every time you open up the messages application. And you can also choose to share any text message you want. So if you choose a couple messages, you can tap on the share icon in the bottom right corner and you can send those text messages to a completely different person. Number five is sending an iMessage with an effect on it. And iOS offers two different effects that you can send in iMessage. You can have a bubble effect and also a full screen effect. If you type out a message, press and hold on the send icon. And the first effect you're going to see is a bubble effect. My favorite one that I use all the time is loud as I really like how cool it looks when you send it, it kind of animates and shakes, but you have a few different other ones such as slam and gentle and also invisible ink. If you tap on the tab at the top of the screen, you can see we also have full screen effects. Some of my favorite ones include echo. I also like the balloons one and also confetti. And a pretty cool hidden Easter egg in iOS is if you send a certain type of iMessage, these full screen effects will be triggered automatically by the system. So for example, if you send happy birthday, the phone is automatically going to put in the balloons effect. This is a really cool feature I love in iOS. Next up at number six is sending a voice message simply by holding your phone up to your ear. And it's pretty much as simple as I just said. When you're in a message thread, all you have to do is raise your iPhone to your ear as if you're taking a phone call and the phone is going to detect this and it's automatically going to start recording a voice message. This is very useful if you have a lot on your mind and you just want to send it as a voice message instead of a long text. Now, I'll be honest with you, I usually don't send voice messages, but knowing how easy and simple it is to send a really quick voice message, I might start using this feature a lot more. And also, if you want to listen to a voice message that you receive, all you have to do is raise it to your ear as soon as you see it in your messages. Number seven is iMessage applications. You are probably familiar with this area that lives above your keyboard that shows all of your iMessage apps. However, you can actually edit these and there are some applications that are available on your iPhone that are not shown by default. So if you scroll all the way to the end and then click on more, you can see all of your available iMessage applications. 
you can choose to edit the arrangement and you can also choose to add applications that weren't in there by default. So for example, I had no idea that there was a Google Maps application and also there is an application for YouTube in iMessage as well, which is pretty cool. So I'd recommend opening up messages and seeing which iMessage apps are available on your phone. The last three tips I'm going to show you are all for the keyboard, so these will work system-wide. However, I included these in the video because I assume that when you're using the keyboard, the majority of the time it's because you are going to be texting someone. The first one for the keyboard is putting it into a one-handed mode. This is extremely useful nowadays because iPhones are getting so large, especially right now because we don't even have an iPhone mini anymore. Half of the newest iPhone models are 6.7 inches, so it's very useful to have a one-handed keyboard available. All you have to do is press and hold on the emoji key on the bottom left, and you can choose either to move the keyboard to the left side or the right side. This makes it so much easier to type one-handed on a large iPhone. Number nine is accessing your secondary keyboard much faster. I believe I've included this in a different video, but I love this tip so much I figured I'd throw it in this video as well. If you ever need to go to your secondary keyboard to input one special character, there's actually a really fast way that you can do this. So say for example, you want to include an exclamation point at the end of a sentence. The way that most people would do this is they would tap to go to their secondary keyboard, they'd put in the exclamation point, and then they would tap back once again to go to their main keyboard. You can actually do this in one simple gesture. All you have to do is press and hold on the secondary keyboard icon, slide over to the character that you want to input, and then release your finger, and instantly it's going to bring you back to the main keyboard. This makes it so much easier if you have to put in one special character, either a number or a question mark or an exclamation point. This makes it so much easier when you're typing. And finally, at number 10, this one is my favorite of the entire video. It is dictation. Dictation has been improved so much in iOS 16, and it is so much easier to use dictation now on your iPhone when you're sending a long message. Dictation can now stay on all the time. That means that you can dictate a message, and then if it made an error in the text, you can go into the keyboard and you can hit backspace and you can edit the text, and you can leave dictation on during that time. Previously in iOS 15 and earlier, dictation was either on or off. But now in iOS 16, you can have dictation on all the time while editing the text message on the keyboard. So this comes in very handy if you are dictating a long message and you realize the system made a mistake. All you have to do is tap into the text field. You can use the keyboard and fix it yourself and dictation can stay on the entire time. And after you fix the error, you can continue dictating your message. I know a lot of people that swear by dictation on their iPhone, and when this feature came out in iOS 16, it is a game changer for people that use dictation a lot. So try it out on your iPhone and let me know in the comments what you think of the updated dictation in iOS 16. So those were 10 tips and tricks for iMessage, and now you know how to use iMessage like a pro. What I want you guys to do now is head down into the comments and tell me what was your favorite tip I shared with you in this video. After you do that, hit the like button, and then make sure you are subscribed as you won't want to miss some of the content we have coming up on the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Michael with IDB, and I'll see you next time.